Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. And today we're going to do a much requested video. And I, I get why people like these. Uh, I do get requests pretty often and people will even remind me like, you know, it's been a while since you did this. And that's, that's great. I love getting those comments. Uh, but I'm sure you get sick of these videos if I made one a month. So this is going to be my next, okay, or my current, if you could only keep one video. And there are a couple of criteria I use, but let me start off first by saying, you know, if someone said to me, you know, look, I put this, this collection of knives that you see before you, and I'll run down which exact knives we have here in a second. But if someone said, you know, I've put these all in a bag, you have to be blindfolded, take one out. Uh, we'll have to put the fixed blades in a sheath first, but uh, said, you look, you're going to blindfold, reach in there and whatever one you get, that's the knife you've got to carry from now on. I'd be like, great. Okay, because seriously, any one of these knives is a fantastic everyday carry, at least as far as my needs go. I would be happy and totally confident carrying any one of these from now on. Okay, so I wanted to get that out right away. And that was one of the reasons, that was one of the primary considerations I used. There were a couple of knives that I thought about including here. But I, I said, look, you know, if someone, that was sort of my thought process. Look, if you could only pick one, you had to be blindfolded and you really could only carry that knife. Then, uh, and, if you, and if you don't feel comfortable, then, you, then I wouldn't include it on the list. Okay, so that's the first thing. That's kind of how I came up with these knives in particular. The other consideration that I did make was it had to be a suitable EDC knife. So, you know, I'm not going to have something like the Formax in here, despite the fact that I love it. I just find it too big and too impractical for EDC. For me, that's an occasional carry. And I have other knives that would fit into the same category on the other side. You know, I recently picked up the... Uh, the Spyderco Swayback, which again, I really, really like, but it's not, it, it's too specifically purposed for a general EDC. It's, a, it's again, an occasional carry for me, more of a gentleman style knife. Okay, so that crosses out a couple of things. The other thing is you may notice that there's a pretty wide range of prices here. And that's because my thinking is this, if you are really gonna pick this one knife that you're gonna carry forever, all right, it, then look, it's forever. You could, you know, if you've got to save up for six months or a year to buy it, then it would be worth it. So, you know, I didn't cross anything off the list in terms of cost. And finally, the last thing I would say is if you're watching this and the, any one of these are your knife, hey, you, you, you've got a great knife. All right. One thing I find is videos like this will sometimes elicit, elicit a response from someone who, you know, maybe they have a, a Riot Torrent. And as far as they're concerned, the Riot Torrent is the greatest knife that's ever been conceived of. And if anyone says it's not, they're going to get <laughs> some comments, right? What, hey, great. Comment away. But understand that I like all of these knives. And if I don't pick your particular favorite, that doesn't mean I dislike it. Uh, again, I've made it clear that I love and would be happy to carry any one of these knives forever. So what we're really, what this comes down to is largely the one that connects with me the most and, sub, and there's a little bit or a lot of subjectivity here. All right. Finally, again, I'll just remind you EDC. That means, you know, I don't, I, I'm not re rejecting anything that can't do some harder tasks. I'm assuming that I can still have at home in my drawer, the knife that I want to take if I'm going to be in a survival situation, or if I'm going to be, you know, a soldier deployed overseas or something like that, I, I may take something different. And so uh, that, that should be, <laughs> that should get my list of qualifications out of the way. Now, let me give you a quick rundown on the knives we have here so that as I talk about these, in case I refer to one without mentioning the name, I don't get a bunch of people complaining. Beginning with the knives that aren't quite in the picture, we have the Lion Steel B35. We've got another Lion Steel, the Lion Steel M4 in G10 and M390. We've got the Manix 2 Lockback. I love the Manix 2 Lockback. Uh, definitely my favorite version of the Manix, and I'm actually going to make a video. I have another Manix 2 a lightweight right now, and I'm going to make a video comparing those and ask, telling you why I like that one better. Spyderco Paramilitary 2, a uh, very popular knife, I believe, with good reason, and one that I enjoy an awful lot and would absolutely be happy to carry every day from now on. Chris Reeve Knives in Kosi. 
This happens to be the Tanto blade, and I think the Tanto blade, I've discussed this fully in a video, makes a really, really good EDC option and would be totally suitable as a knife that you're going to carry with you all the time. Riot Torrent. This knife checks all of the high-end, you know, high satisfaction boxes. Fantastic fit and finish, action, materials, uh, just a, a wonderful, wonderful knife. Cold Steel Recon 1. A little bit big, but honestly, in my area, I, well, one, I've EDC'd this a lot. I've had a Recon 1 in various forms for years and years and have carried one so often that I know from my own experience that this works as a fantastic EDC. All right, very large, very tough, but absolutely doable. Hinderer XM18, same thing. This is about my fifth XM18. I've had one for years. I've carried one for years. And again, because of that, I can attest that I could happily carry this as an EDC. Wee Knives Malice. Now, there are a lot of nice Wee Knives out there. Uh, this one, some people will dislike because it's a little heavy. I really don't care about weight unless it's like insane, like seven, eight, nine ounces. Um, I, I think this is the best thing that Wee Knives has done. It, in terms of a high-end titanium frame lock, it's a real standard bear for me. I, I would take this over a lot of other knives. And because of that, in fact, you've seen me compare this to a lot of other knives. And so you, you kind of know the, the deal there. Um, my Benchmade Crooked River. Now this is a full-size Crooked River and you could probably argue this is a little big for EDC. I, I think as long as you're aware of your surroundings and how you're using the knife, uh, I think you're fine. And you could always carry a multi-tool or something along with it in case you didn't want to pull out that big blade. You know that this one has been customized a little to sort of my exact desires. And then finally, the Cold Steel AD-10. Uh, this this one checks a lot of boxes, guys. Uh, one of the best things, if not the best thing, that Cold Steel has ever done. So those are the contenders, and I I really don't know which one is going to win. I purposefully didn't. Um, I, I purposefully didn't kind of make a decision about this before starting. So we'll all get to kind of experience this together. I hope I'm not too long-winded and rambly and all over the place. Uh, but let's, let's go ahead and get started with excluding a couple of things. So the first knife that I'm going to exclude is going to be the Para 2. Now, I like the Para 2 and I carry this knife quite a lot. Uh, I, I enjoy the heck out of it, but there are two things here. One, the blade to handle ratio is a little wonky on this. And two, well, I, I specifically said, you know, it's got to be a knife that's EDC. It doesn't have to be a hard use, heavy duty folder. Um, I find the Para 2, compared especially to some of the other knives that are out here, it, it just isn't as heavy duty as I would like. And I, I sort of carry this when I need something a little more lightweight. And it, well, it's a great knife. We're going to, this one is going to be the first excluded. Uh, let's see here. So now I want to talk a little bit about, I've got these two fixed blades here. And these are probably my favorite two medium fixed blades ever. This is the Line Steel M4. This is the B35. And I'm actually going to, for the purposes of this video, treat these as one knife. I've got a lot of comparisons that I want to do. I, I want to try these side by side, and I haven't had time to spend enough time with these two. I've, I've done lots of cutting, but it, it's, it's been individual. And so let's put them down for a second. The reason these are here, well, there are a couple of reasons. One, I think both of these are very, very suitable EDC knives, uh, perhaps even great EDC knives, especially in my area. Uh, I could see the leather sheaths being a problem for some people, although you could easily change those out and, and upgrade to Kydex sheaths. They're, they're definitely M4 sheaths 
all over the place available online and B35 sheaths, I'm sure they're out there. So you could switch them to Kydex, making these a little more suitable for EDC. And I have to make this comment here. Because I'm in Canada and because our knife laws are really weird and stupid, um, none of these knives, by the way, on the table are illegal here, but it always feels like we're like a hair's breadth away from everything being illegal. Um, fixed blades, you really can't make fixed blades illegal to carry because they're such widely used tools. All right, so I want to, you know, I, I really could envision uh, a time where in Canada you can only carry a fixed blade as your EDC because virtually every folding knife has been excluded. Now, I'd like to think that you know, cooler heads will prevail and some kind of common sense will take place. But to use common sense and legislation in the same phrase, right, is like a misnomer. So I'm not hopeful that that'll happen. So the fixed blades remain a consideration. Uh, do I exclude them now? Let's, let's leave them in for now. I, I just wanted to kind of explain why they're in here. Uh, what am I going to exclude next? I think the next thing I'm going to exclude is the Recon 1. Um, actually, you know what? No, I'm going to keep the Recon 1 in just a little bit longer. I'm going to exclude the Riot Torrent and the Wee Knives Malice. I like both of these, and I think both of these would be suitable as forever EDC knives. They both kind of balance out... Uh, utility and fanciness and you know they they check that box they check the boxes that I have for something really satisfying and really spectacular but I feel like if I had to carry something forever there are a couple other options here I would take over these two so let's let's get them out of the way again uh, I do enjoy the heck out of them now that I've got a little more room let's see if I can get all the the knives in the picture here Okay, so I can sort of get all the knives in the picture. Uh, as I look at this stack, <laughs> um, kind of deciding at this point between the Manix 2 Lockback and the Recon 1. Now, both of these knives I, I like a lot. I find them very utilitarian. Uh, the thinness on the edge uh, with the Manix is really, really good. Um, so I think as an EDC option, the Manix is a little bit more manageable. Uh, well, I definitely could foresee having the Recon 1 as my only EDC. I think it's going to go just because of size and, you know, the size of that blade. And it, it doesn't, I don't know, it, it, it doesn't quite offer as much satisfaction as some of the other knives. I know there are knives here that are just as big, but to me anyway, they're just a little more enjoyable. Uh, the Manix 2 uh, Lockback, it feels so good in hand. I find myself carrying this all the time and because of it, it's, it's pretty lightweight. Um, and I feel like it's still very capable. Like I barely have to sacrifice anything to carry a knife that you almost don't notice. So where do we go next with this? Let's 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 get the fixed blades out of the way. Um, I do think fixed blades can be a great option. These two are two of my favorites. Uh, and at this point, they're still a tie. I'm going to do a full comparison of these two knives. I'm going to, for my own purposes, spend a lot of time cutting the cutting with these and, and trying them side by side to see which one I ultimately land on in terms of which one is my all-time favorite. For now, I'm going to take these out of the equation for a couple of reasons. One, we're not quite at the place in Canada where the only thing you can legally carry around is a fixed blade. If we ever get to that point, I might move um, <laughs> because I think, you know, that would be an indication that your country is just a complete disaster and, and there's no common sense left. Um, so I hope that doesn't happen in Canada, although I could foresee it, right? And, you know, when it comes to government making stupid decisions, there's no, there's no limit to the insanity of that. Um, so we'll move the fixed blades aside and we're down to five knives left. Uh, honestly, guys, I find all of these quite satisfying. I find all of these very enjoyable. Uh, I carry all of them quite a lot. 
I guess the least special one, the one that sort of gets me the least excited, has got to be the Manix 2 lockback. It gets me pretty excited, but, but not quite as much as the ones that are left here. Um, at this point, guys, I'd love to hear, if these were your choices, which would you take? Um, this is r really hard, guys. Um, let's, let's see. I think these two uh, definitely are staying. The XM18 or the Crooked River. Uh, I enjoy the heck out of both of these, but there are there there are a couple of little things that I'm gonna that I'm gonna justify excusing these two from the list. Okay, the Crooked River is a phenomenal knife, but it's so long and looks a little bit weapony. So because of that, I think I'm gonna exclude this one. Uh, the other thing is for you know. Um, the ergonomics on it are good, but not amazing for its its size and, and not amazing compared to the other ones that are left here. Um, so now we've got the XM18, the 8010, and the Inkosi. <sighs> So I think the one that's going to go next is going to be the Hinderer, largely because, well, I think this blade is great and I, you know, I like it better than all the other blade shapes. The flat grind is not going to cut as well as these other two. So over the long run, I think I would probably kind of wish that I had something with a hollow grind. And so uh, maybe I should have just used that criteria right from the start <laughs> and I would have ended up with these two. All right, now, this is where things get really, really tough. Uh, both of these knives are extremely well-built. They're extremely tough and durable. And, and I would take either one of these even into a pretty hard-use situation. You know, if you said, hey, we're going to drop you in the forest and you have to pick a folder, I'd probably pick the Formax. But if you said I had to take one of these, I'd be pretty happy. Uh, so, so these two really better than I think everything else on the table strike almost the perfect balance between being carryable and being heavy duty and durable and indestructible. Um, they both have a hollow or hollow ish grind. Uh, the Tanto, you know, I think is actually, you know, unless you're actually skinning an animal or something like that, which I'm uh, who does that with their folder, right? I, I mean, maybe some of you do, but I don't. So I feel like in terms of utility, these are pretty much the same. Um, so I have to say the one thing that draws me always to the 8010 is how great it feels in hand. Like there is nothing out there that feels as good as the 8010. Like it just, when you grip this knife, it's like, you know, you're ready for anything, right? You're just like, grab this knife and let the world come at me. Like it doesn't matter what it could be. And you definitely don't get that feeling quite to the same degree with the Inkosi, uh, just because it's a little smaller, not quite as hand filling, not quite as comfortable. It's also the way thinner, uh, the the overall fit and finish on the Inkosi is much more satisfying. So just, you know, opening and closing this and feeling, there's there's something about a, a Chris Reeve knife that when you close it right here, oh, it's so satisfying. And that makes, that's so enjoyable. Uh, it's also going to be a lot easier to carry around compared to the, the thickness of this. <sighs> Slightly more aggressive hollow grind on here, which actually I really, really like. I think this is focusing when I pick this stuff up as well as I wish it would. I don't know, guys. I'm hemming and hawing about this, and it's really, really tough to say which one I would take. I enjoy both of these so much, but I, I kind of promised that we'd come to a conclusion here.
and boy, this is a really, really tough choice. So you know what? I think I would, I would find more joy from day to day, picking my knife up and putting it in my pocket if it was the Chris Reeve. And in terms of utility, these are pretty close. I love the stronger lock on the 8010. I love the handle. This is one of, this is maybe the most comfortable production folder in existence. It is phenomenal in hand. Um, but I think I would be willing to sacrifice that comfort in hand for the slimness of carry and the pride of ownership that comes from the Inkosi. You know, this is this is like an heirloom quality thing. This is a knife that I would anticipate handing down to my kids. And honestly, they won't know this, but <laughs> uh, when they get married, I plan to buy each of them a Chris Reeve. You know, who knows by then what, what knife it'll be. Uh, if it's the Nkosi or if it's whatever their version of the Nkosi is at the time, uh, that's that's on that's an, an absolute plan that I have. So, for all of those reasons, out of the knives that currently exist in my collection, which by the way are there because I've chosen them, uh, out of all the knives that I you know get to play with on a regular basis, I think if I was going to keep one and only one forever and ever, it would have to be the Nkosi. And and in fact, well. You may be looking at this going, but would it be the Tanto, Kevin? I, I actually think it would. The Tanto makes this just a little more interesting, a little more special, and extremely well suited to EDC type tasks, you know, for, for opening packages or scraping things, or, uh, you know, that, that utility of a secondary tip is really, really good. So for all of those reasons, I'm going with the Chris Reeve knives in Kosi with the Tanto blade. If you want to know more about the Nkosi, I've <laughs> I've made multiple videos comparing this to other knives. You know, I've taken this whole thing down and, and talked about each of the components. Uh, this really, really is something extremely special. And so that's going to be the pick that I go with. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. Sorry it took me so long. I, I didn't know how to approach this. I, I thought about going through this whole pr whole process not on camera, but I knew I wouldn't. This would. <laughs> I knew I would second guess myself too much, and I'd end up thinking about it for three days and never making the video. So I thought better turn the camera on and force yourself to work through this thought process. And so there we go, guys of all the knives in my collection, of all the knives really that I've ever had. Think about the fact that these are the ones I've kept. So this would be the one. All right, thanks a lot for watching. Let me know if you agree or disagree, if there's another knife here that you would have taken instead of this. And let's just close off with a quick sort of homage to all of the knives that didn't get picked. So we've got the Hinderer XM18. We've got the Benchmade Crooked River phenomenal knife. One of the best things Benchmade has ever done. Cold Steel Recon 1. Still, you know, uh, this is one of the cheaper knives on this list, and, and it is just a, a force to be reckoned with. Riot Torrent. Uh, again, guys, if you don't want to spend a lot of money, but you really want to know what a full custom knife, you know, if you want to know what the best action uh, ever it feels like, get a Riot Torrent and it'll be, it's its so close to anything else out there. Even the best things like the, the Koenigs and the Shirogorovs are only mildly different than this. All right, uh, the Cold Steel AD-10, definitely the best thing Cold Steel has ever done. A couple of Spydercos here, the Manix 2 Lockback, my favorite version of the Lockback, or my favorite version of the Manix 2. Stay tuned, sometime in the near future I'm going to have a video where I compare this to a lightweight and talk about why I prefer the Lockback. Para 2, Modern Classic, Wee Knives Malice, Ferrum Forge design, absolutely phenomenal knife. And the two fixed blades I had here were the Lion Steel M4 and the Lion Steel B35. So there you go, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Thanks for putting up with me. Don't forget to check those links down in the description. That does help the channel. I'm going to link to DLT here because most of these knives are going to be, you know, in that DLT specialty class of knives. So uh, I think that's a good place to, to check if you want to find something like this. If you use that link, it does help the channel. Now, again, 
don't just use the link. I mean, I, I, great. I'm, li I'm glad people would help the channel. That's awesome. But if, if the knife is like way more expensive than you can get it somewhere else, well, then get it somewhere else. But if the knife is competitively priced and you buy it there, you can't help the channel. So finally, I think this is the fifth time I've said thanks for watching. Uh, I'm going to thank you one last time and get out of here.